Have you ever broken an arm? Or have you ever slept bad one night because you had a bad night or you're tired? And, or have you ever tried to sit out in the sun, tried to read something on the, on the screen? Then, then you can benefit from having accessible web. So how should we make the web accessible when the ideals don't match reality? Welcome to our presentation. My name is Lotte Johansen. I'm a senior developer at Finn, where I've been for almost 10 years. And I'm mainly a back-end developer, but I was one of the founders of the accessibility group we have at Finn. My name is Tom Vidra. I'm a front-end developer at Finn. I've been here for uh, longer than Lotte. I lost count of the years. Uh, and I also founded this uh, accessibility group with Lotte. And my name is Tor Martin Storsletten. I'm a front-end developer and also accessibility specialist. I joined Finn about one and a half years ago, and so I'm one of the most recent members of this accessibility group. Um, I'm also totally blind. We come from Finn.no. If you're Norwegian, you've probably heard of that before. And Finn is Norway's number one online marketplace. We have around 60 million, up to 60 million page views a day. And the average Norwegian spent almost 30 hours on Finn last year. We're about 140 developers and wanting even more. <laughs> and last year we won an accessibility award that we're proud of. So what's in it for you here? Well, after this talk, uh, you'll have a few more tools on how to make web accessible. You know what's the ideal, and you know some ways to make the code accessible even when the ideals don't match reality. We'll go through some examples in semantics, skip links, some design that is really hard to code, and how to make the screen reader know what's going on on the site, both for text and for updates, and some graphic elements like image and SVGs. So what's the ideal? Well, if you should remember one thing from this talk, then remember to use plain HTML. Like John Alsop says it pretty well, rule number one, if you can do it in HTML, don't use CSS. Rule number two, if you can do it in CSS, don't use JS. And if all else fails, then use JS. It's pretty bad to say that in a JS conference, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the ideal, we think. So you should keep it simple. Um, if you want to make a button, if you make it a custom way with a div class button, then you have to make it look like a button, you have to make it work like a button, you have to show the right mouse pointer, you have to insert it into the tab index, you have to make the screen reader tell it's a button, and so on and so forth. However, if you use the plain HTML button tag, then you're done. You don't have to do anything. Because all the screen readers and all the browsers have been working for years to make that work. So we're here to teach you basics, H HTML. Uh, the main idea about HTML is to put uh, structure to your content. That we have a set of text, and each set of text has a proper heading with a suitable level, like you have there h1, h2, etc., and the text is put in a p tag. And I guess you know this already, but uh, Tor Martin, you're not happy with this. You want uh, more uh, markup in than this. Yeah, more semantics, please. Uh, in general, a general rule of thumb is that um, the body of an HTML5 document should be divided into three sections. That's header, main, and footer. Now, header and footer, that's for global site content. Um, and so everything that is unique to that particular page goes into the main tag. And, and that is quite useful, actually, for machines as well as assistive technology, because you can quickly identify the main, like the really relevant content of the page. So screen reader users, for instance, they can quickly navigate to the main content and skip all the global sites content so they don't have to read that all over again for every page they visit on your site. But uh, not all pages are designed with headings. And if you have a look at uh, the search page on Finn here, 
Uh, it's pretty obvious, at least for us who can see, that we have the filters on the left side, we have the search results on the right side. Uh, it doesn't make sense to us to put headings everywhere. Uh, how can we implement this design and still make it uh, usable for you? Yeah, and so headings are quite important. It's, uh, it's the mainly preferred method for navigation for screen reader users. Um, and so even if it doesn't make sense visually, you should still add headings um, at the beginning of each section. And the way we do it is you cannot, for, here's the thing, you cannot use the hidden attribute of HTML5, for instance, for this, or disable, display none or visibility hidden, because those methods will hide it for screen readers and assistive technology as well. So the method we have to, do, to use here is we have to use an off-screen hiding technique. And there are many of them. I believe Tom has one he can show for you now. Yes, uh, we are uh, using absolute positioning to, to place uh, the heading uh, 10,000 pixels outside the window. So it won't be visible for anyone. But it's still there. Yeah. Uh, you also want to stress the importance of unique IDs. This is very basic HTML. Everybody knows that uh, the IDs should be unique. But what's the consequence if uh, someone forgets that and two elements have the same I ID? Yeah, the consequences can be pretty, pretty severe, and it can also be very hard to track down the bugs that will arise because of duplicate IDs. Um, there was an example. I, I was trying to figure out why there was a form where we had a bunch of checkboxes, and each checkbox had a label. Um, but for some reason, screen readers, they, they wouldn't pick up those labels. It would just say, checkbox, 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 and no label. So you, the user had no idea what they would check or uncheck. Um, and it turned out the problem was there were two versions of the same form on the same page. One version optimized for small screens, and one optimized for large screens. And what happened was, Although inside each form, each um, checkbox had a unique ID, but it was the same ID in the other form as well. So the label, the browser thought the label was going to be for the checkbox that was hidden, not for the visible checkbox. And so the screen readers and the browser, they got confused, and yeah, the labels got lost, basically. Mm. So the, it's, if you're implementing components or making templates, just make sure you have a mechanism for generating unique IDs. Make sure you don't run into conflicts with duplicate IDs, because that's really hard to fix. Yes. Um, there's also something called uh, skip links. Uh, that are some uh, shortcuts for users who are not using pointing devices to get uh, straight to the main content so they don't have to navigate through all the headings and navigational stuff. Uh, can I talk about how this is uh, useful to you? Of course. Um, so, there are a lot of users who, for any number of reasons, they don't want to use a mouse or they can't use a mouse or, so, maybe they have a broken arm, maybe they just, it's just more convenient at the time to just use the keyboard, um, and so they would prefer to just use the tab key to tab around on the page, um, and for those users, it would be very nice if you can add skip links, because then you can quickly skip, just like with screen readers, you know, you, and we talked about the, the main tag, navigating like past all the global site content. Well, people who don't have a screen reader, they might still want to do the same thing, skip past all that global site content and just go straight to the main um, content of the page. Sometimes the designers want some really cool design that is hard to code. And then we have to be strong as developers and say, no, this is not possible to code. Here is an example we had from uh, Finn, where we have the overview of ads, where the designers wanted us to put a button to mark the ad as a favorite, this heart button, uh, inside a link. So how did we work on that, Tom? It took a very long time before we actually discovered this bug because uh, uh, the browsers allowed it. But uh, uh, some of us tried to um, 
make it possible to log into Finn and save and add as a favorite by clicking this uh, heart-shaped button here at the same time with the same click. And to do that, he had to replace this uh, button tag with an A tag. And that's one link inside another, and that's not valid HTML. But so then the whole page broke. But a button inside a link is not valid either. But for some reasons, the browsers are actually supporting it, which is quite uh, risky, because they are not committed to keep supporting it. So it may break anytime soon. Uh, so um, let's play a video. Uh, it looks OK in the browser, uh, but uh, let's, uh, play, let's play a video where I'm trying to add, uh, save an ad as a favorite. Uh, while I'm using a screen reader. This is in uh, Norwegian, but all you need to, to understand is where the focus is. Kobling. Halslia. The Kobling. Svolvar tol ny Kobling. Svolvar skråstrek Lofoten. As you can see here, we didn't reach the button at all. It was just jumping from link to link. So this is more a uh, design that we would uh, prefer. Here we are uh, always placing the button on top of uh, the image on the upper right corner. Then it's easier for us to pull the button outside the link, and we can use absolute positioning to position it where we want. Uh, the challenge with the other design is that um, it, um, it relates to the size of the image, uh, the size of the text, and that's very difficult and maybe even impossible to implement with valid HTML. But uh, Tom Martin, you, you made it uh, work without uh, messing too much with, uh, with the code. Can you tell us how you did that? Yes. Um, so I, I used a feature of, from ARIA. And ARIA, it stands for Accessible Rich Internet Application. Um, it's uh, a specification that like essentially adds a lot of spice that you can add to your HTML to make things more accessible um, if you just do it right. Um, so what I did here in this case, I used something called ARIA owns, which, uh, and, and I added it to a div tag beneath the link and pointed, like the value, it's, it has the ID of the button. So essentially what happens is that it pulls that button out of the link and inserts it into the div elements in the accessibility tree. And the accessibility tree is equivalent to the DOM just for assistive technology. So as far as screen, screen readers and assistive technology are concerned, that button now exists in the div element instead of inside the link. Shall we play how it works uh, with uh, your faces? Yeah. Kobling. Halslia, hyggelig en, skråstrek, top, lagre i favoritliste, knapp, kobling, svolvert, hold nye leilighet, lagre i favoritliste, knapp. So now it actually reach the button. Yeah, and, and as we can see there, it also recognized that the button is a button and the link is a link, so the screen reader is happy as far as semantic goes. So for the user, everything seems to work fine, and that, that's what counts. But it's still in valid HTML, right? <laughs> yes. So if you're using the code we showed you, don't tell anyone I get it from us. <laughs> to make the screen reader know what's going on in the site, you can use something called ARIA label. Well, when you use plain HTML, then you don't have to think about ARIA magic, because then uh, everything will work out of the box, as I said before, because all the screen readers and everything, they know how to handle HTML elements. However, if not, then you can use ARIA label to know what's going on on the site to tell the screen reader. And here is my first ARIA label from Finn four years ago. Then I changed the notifications box that we have on top of the, of the page to know if you have some new alerts. And I changed it to say six new notifications instead of just notifications. And then I used an ARIA label. However, you changed it afterwards back to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> notifications and just a number. 
to Martin. Can you explain why? Yeah, so I changed it so it says like notifications and then it says the number of notifications you have. And that's because traditionally users of screen readers, they would navigate by like if, if you want to find like a specific link, you know the link you want, then you would pull up the list of all the links on the page and you would use first letter navigation to find the link. So you would start typing NOT and then it would find notifications right away. Um, and of course, that wouldn't work if the link, if the label of the link starts with just a number, because that means you, you would have to know that number in advance before you could even type the number to navigate to it. So it's for those users who are still using that traditional method of navigating on a web page, we, we wanted to change it so it has like a static, a fixed um, start of the label of the link. I see. And then we have uh, numbers, because numbers are hard. It's both hard to know how to, to write it, because you have different types of uh, decimal signs, and you have different types of thousand separators. And so that's the first thing that is hard. And then the second thing that is hard is how to read out the numbers. Should it be, if you have 1997, or should it be 1,997, or should it be 1,997? Uh, we had a discussion in a Facebook group for accessibility in Norway, and this was the best solution we came up to in this discussion. It's made by Christopher Lium at NRK. And here he has used an ARIA label to just say the number, so the screen reader will then say 10,000. And then they have a roll text. And can you explain something about that to Martin? Yeah, the, the issue with roll text, um, for, I mean, it was proposed back in 2011. Um, it has yet to be made into the ARIA specification, and there are a number of reasons for that. But so far, Safari and Chrome, they have actually implemented it. So it works if you are fortunate enough to use Safari or Chrome, but that also means it does not work for the other half of your users, like on Firefox or Edge, even some users are still using Internet Explorer. Um, and so, which, which means it's quite re unreliable. You shouldn't use it unless you actually have to, but try not to put like important content in, that, in there because some users, maybe even half of your users who are using assistive technology might miss out on the content inside of that label. So it's at this point, it's, it's risky to use it. Um, we'll see back um, in 2020 if it makes it, its way into the ARIA 1.2 specification. But for now, um, it, yeah, it's sort of experimental to use it. Then we have alternative text for graphic elements. There's a rule of thumb that you should always have an alt attribute. If you leave out the alt attribute, the, the screen readers will try to find the name of the file, which could be a long number, for example, which is boring to listen to. Uh, however, if you have a, just a de decoration image, then it's not important to read it out for the screen readers. Uh, so then you have to remember still the alt tag, and, but that should be empty. Because if you leave it, then it will try to read the name, or the title, so, but if you leave it empty, it will understand, okay, I don't have to care about reading it out. So remember that. And then we have SVGs, Scalable, scalable Vector Graphics. Uh, they don't have alt attributes. So what should we use instead, Tomate? So for SVGs, um, there is a title tag, and, and you have to, first of all, you have to make sure the title tag is the first child element of the SVG. Um, but unfortunately, that is not enough, because there are still combinations of screen readers and browsers that won't support SVGs, with, even with the title tag. And for those, um, we have to also apply some ARIA magic here. We have to add role img to the SVG, and we have to add ARIA labeled by um, to the SVG as well. With and the value should be the ID of the title tag. So you have to also set an ID for the title tag. 
Um, and in that way, you give that element, like those elements, the semantics of being a graphical element and all um, modern screen readers and browsers will recognize that and so, yeah, you, no users will miss out on the information inside the, tit the title tag. It also has a more complex SRGs uh, with more information inside it that needs to be uh, organized better. Uh, this is uh, from our real estate uh, ads where we have something called a neighborhood profile which uh, describes uh, the distances from an estate to the nearest school, nearest bus station, nearest shop, etc. And we were provided with this, this uh, wonderful piece of art to visualize those distances. And uh, I'm not going to play a video that shows uh, how this worked with a screen reader uh, when we first received it. For 11 minutes, 5 minutes, 17 minutes, 5 minutes, one minute. So, Martin, did this make sense to you? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> you heard how many minutes it was. Yeah, um, it didn't just make any contextual <laughs> sense. <laughs> no. Uh, so, to make this accessible, we pretty much did the same thing as in the previous example, but instead of using the SOG tag, we were using the element that surrounds each piece of information. As we see here, we are using the G element and put the role and era label, label by attributes uh, on that element, and we have the title and description attributes as the first children of that element. And then we make some more um, some text that makes some more sense out of it. So we say school as the title, and we says it's 11 minutes to walk. And then it works like this. Oh, and we also have to uh, hide those elements that doesn't contain any information that's just uh, presentational, so we don't have to navigate through them. And this is how it works uh, after we fixed it. Tech school 11 minutes to walk image. Shop 5 minutes by car image. Train 17 minutes by car image. Bus 5 minutes to walk image. Kindergarten 1 minute to walk image. Does this make more sense to you? Yes, much, much better. Now, now I understand more. That's good for you, but unfortunately, it doesn't work for anyone else because uh, nobody understood what this graphics was all about. So now, neighborhood profile looked like this. We're just using plain HTML, uh, more traditional uh, design to it, and there's no magic needed to make it accessible. <laughs> so. Finally, we are going to talk about uh, pages that are being automatically updated while we are using them. I uh, will show you um, another video uh, without sound this time uh, with a quite ordinary search for a car on film. Okay, can you tell us what happened? <laughs> no, uh, that was quite mysterious for me. <laughs> so what can I do to make sure that you understand what's going on here? So, um, again, we have to consult ARIA for this. Um, and we're going to use something called ARIA Live, which is essentially an attribute that will um, tell a screen re reader or as any assistive technology that when something happens on the page, something changes inside of that ARIA live region, it, the screen reader should read it out loud no matter where on the page the screen reader is currently located um, with its uh, cursor. So for a search page with search filter, it is, it's very useful because let's say you, you're checking or unchecking some filters and and you don't really know, maybe, maybe the user thinks that there's a button they have to resubmit the form, or I mean, they don't really understand, they don't, they don't see that the re uh, result list is actually being updated as they check and uncheck those boxes. And so we use an ARIA live region to tell the number of hits, and that will give the user two pieces of information. One, they will understand that, okay, something's going on, there's a new search result list um, on the page now, and also they know how many results are in that list. 
And, and that's useful because, you know, if you check too many filters, then maybe you have a zero result, so there's no point even trying to navigate to the result list because it's going to be empty anyway. So, yeah. I guess uh, Tom has a video he can show. Yes. Da er så på der på kronen. Biler i Norge, vindu, søk, kombinerte ruta, har tastet True Focus. You have a new message. Lim in. Du er på en kombinerte ruta. Skriv 6, eller trykk på kontroll til valg. Mellomrom for å vise en liste med valg. 200. Overskriftsnivt. Liste 21. Er det 0 BMW? 0. Ikke markert av meg. Citroen. 1. Ikke markert av meg. Ford. 30. Ikke markert av meg. Kingsbox. Markert. Ford. 30. Av meg. Kingsbox. 30. Treff. Yeah, so um, that was a lot of Norwegian babble, but basically what was being said was that uh, he checked that box and once he checked it, it also said 30 hits. So now the user is aware that, okay, there are now 30 hits, 30 results in that result list. Quite useful for the user. So to sum up, we've seen now several examples on how to make your code more accessible with semantics and skip links and some design that is really hard to code and some graphic elements like image and SVGs and how to use ARIA for, for text and for updates on the page. But as I said, if you should remember one thing from this talk, remember to use plain HTML. Thank you. Thank you. Do you all want to come to the couch? Come on. This way. Okay, we got a lot of questions. That was such an excellent talk. Okay, two questions were around what's the state for automatic testing and accessibility? Are tools like Axe, are there others? Yeah, what's the state? <laughs> there, there are plenty of tools uh, for automatic testing. Uh, we are actually we haven't uh, uh, made a part of our uh, building process at Finn yet, but uh, that's one of our plans for the summer. Actually, we are in the project with Norsk Grand Central, whatever that is in English. Uh, where we will uh, try it out. Uh, but there are plenty of tools, and uh, there are also uh, tools that you can um, add on to your browser. Uh, but uh, and th there are good tools, but uh, they um, they are only uh, technical validations. Uh, they know nothing about uh, the user experience. So I would also recommend to do some manual testing. And uh, the easiest testing you, you can do is to try to use a page by only the keyboard. Uh, put away your mouse, don't use button devices. Everything on a page should be possible to use by the keyboard only. But uh, you should also uh, learn to use a screen reader. We okay. have a full talk on that as well. <laughs> that, that's a talk on its own. Another talk. <laughs> that, <laughs> Next I time. It was a great tip that the automatic testing tools are testing for technical errors and not user experience. Yes. Um, okay, well, but back onto the technical part. How do you view or debug an accessibility tree? Hey, Martin? <laughs> um, I believe there are uh, extensions, like browser extensions, that will do it for you. Um, but again, like, um, yeah, I think the best is just tr use the screen reader and just see what works and um, just just try. Like when you've implemented something in your application, just launch your screen a favorite screen reader or any screen reader that you're somewhat familiar with and just see if it works as expected or not. And that's that's honestly the best way to test. Um, so um, personally. I use JAWS, a screen reader called JAWS, um, and that screen reader has some built-in features that let you see what JAWS detects as far as like attributes and stuff goes, and that will show you all of the, the ARIA attributes. And <clears throat> so uh, that is honestly the way that I work when, when I need to know like what, what it looks like in the accessibility tree. All right. 
Um, and is that Jaws, J A W? Just it's J A W. Okay, w just like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, what about resources on how to make interactive things like web VR and 3D graphics more accessible? Do you have tips or resources? <laughs> The best tip is to uh, test it, I think, and uh, see how it works, and then um, go to Google. Yeah, <laughs> Google is different. It's a, it's a very, very broad, very huge topic, and, and so that could be like a, an entire conference just by itself, that topic there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, but Google, Google is a really nice source in general. Like, you can find most answers just by Googling. Um, unfortunately, there's like s most of the really good information is fragmented. So honestly, Google is just the best way to like collect all of these fragments from all over the web. All right, and any recommendations for using background image, which doesn't have an alt? Uh, I'm not sure if it's a problem anymore, uh, but. Uh, Previously, on uh, at least uh, a Windows system and Internet Explorer, they were um, recognizing uh, background images as uh, uh, decoration, so that they didn't expect them to contain any actual um, content. So uh, some um, um, uh, tools for um, for uh, low sighted uh, people, people with um, not blind but um, partially sighted, uh, they remove all the background images. So, uh, my recommendation is to still uh, use background images for uh, decoration only. Don't put any content there. Yeah. So, don't use sprites, for example. Okay, and actually we have some more time, so I'm gonna ask another question that I had, which was, I'd love to hear more about the process of starting an accessibility team at work. Sure. <laughs> yeah, well, it started four years ago when there was a new legislation in Norway that all websites have to be accessible. And in the newspapers it was written that this is bad, it's so, so expensive for all uh, websites. And then I asked, what's going on with Finn with accessibility? And there wasn't much. It was Tom who was doing a little bit. And so we were some designers and developers who got together and formed this group. And then we've worked since then on making Finn accessible. So we're teaching other developer teams and we're helping and we're talking about it and yeah. So what we learned about this is that uh, we had to be more than one person. We had to create a group. Uh, if you feel that you are the only person in your organization that uh, cares about accessibility, uh, try to find some more people like you and uh, join forces with them because it's too much uh, work uh, doing this uh, on your own and it's uh, easier to be listened to. Uh, when you are uh, a group. And then when you win awards, it's all totally validated. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> that also makes the management group uh, realize that, oh yeah, this is important, we should focus on it. So uh, yeah. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> Great. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.